Today we're going to talk about the WeBoost cell boosters and there's a ton of videos out here but we're going to compare our experience specifically with the WeBoost Drive X versus the WeBoost Drive Reach. Now we ran the Drive X which is different than the Drive Reach because it's a black box. I mean that's the most easily distinguishable feature difference between them. However if you look at the spec sheets you think they're the same otherwise. They still show both 50 dB gain um, from both units. However, when you really dig into it, you find out that this red box, the Drive Reach, has about twice the power consumption as the old Drive X, the black box. And what that means is that this dude can send more power to the antenna, which means that it can get out further, which is partly why they call it the Reach. It can hit further cell towers. Now we ran the Drive X, the black box, on our old Winnebago View for about two years and in a ton of different situations. And what we found is that it worked fairly well. Typically, if you had some cell service, it would increase it maybe one bar, possibly two bars, but oftentimes it was just a little bit of a speed boost and it would just help it be a slight bit more functional or a little bit faster. Now this drive reach has been a really interesting thing. We've had it for about a year now and we've used it all over the place. And one of the things that was most impressive with it compared to the black box, the Drive X, is that we've gotten cell service in areas where we couldn't get anything on our cell phones, where our cell phones showed completely no service whatsoever. For instance, in Death Valley, we were able to fire this guy up and get just enough cell service to be able to send a text message. Now that's really handy if you're in the back country and you just need to make some basic communication via cell phone text message or with a phone call. That's where this thing really shines. Now, from our experience with it, as far as the data end and internet, it helps, it certainly helps. We were camped out at a lake where we basically had very, very limited data on our phones. It was pretty much not usable, but with this turned on, it became usable where you could do more than just send and receive emails you could actually surf the internet and we actually uploaded a video using this uh, drive reach which was fantastic now it did take all night we just left the laptop on but it's pretty cool to be able to do that out in the middle of nowhere another useful feature is using a mapping program or online maps to show where your cell coverage is depending on where you're headed we've been using Gaia maps and you can see if you click the little layers here, you got cell coverage for Verizon. If you turn that on, you can see it shows up in red where the cell coverage is. You can see where we're at right now. There's supposed to be no cell service, which is fairly accurate. We barely have enough connection to make a phone call without the cell booster. And it's basically spotty. It kind of breaks up and whatnot. And then with the cell booster, we can actually um, have a proper conversation without it breaking up. But if you're traveling somewhere and you're completely out of the red area, it's going to be hit and miss whether or not you can get any sort of signal even with the booster. But this is where the booster kind of comes in with the higher power, it kind of gets a little bit further out. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how we installed this unit and kind of how it compares to the Drive X that we had previously. Now, first of all, you notice that this unit if you look at the spec sheets that their install shows that it has a little attachment bracket that snaps onto this unit where you can basically secure it, you know, in a car application under a seat or maybe on a wall like how we've done it. However, when they ship this, they no longer include that bracket. And I talked with their customer service. Apparently that part number has been discontinued, which is a huge drag because trying to secure this down, they just give you some Velcro and that's not practical if you're going to hang it on a wall. What we did was take some little L brackets and we basically bent two top and bottom and then one on the side so we slid it in here and this holds it against the wall here. It's been super sturdy and it's worked really well with all the off-roading we've done and it's, uh, it's not the best but cosmetically not terrible. The other thing we did with this install was because this is an RV wall we were able to put all of the wiring on the back side of this wall. So we've got the outputs for the antennas top and bottom and then the power connection. Now this power connection just uses a 12 volt socket outlet 
And what we did is put the socket outlet here, but then actually ran all the wiring, all the extra, and left it coiled behind this wall. So it basically left it a really clean install where we have really limited exposed wiring. Now on the inside, we have this little candy bar style antenna. And we also have our jet pack that then, you know, gets a signal off of that. Now what we found with a lot of testing and using a bunch of different apps to actually show the real gain that was happening from this unit was that your cell phone pretty much has to be touching that candy bar antenna for maximum uh, effectiveness. And on my cell phone, it actually mattered if the antenna was at the top of the phone or mid or the bottom. There's actually, a, it's pretty interesting how uh, particular it was with that. So we put it in this spot so we could basically have both of our cell phones and the jetpack provide the maximum amount of boost all at the same time. Uh, this certainly isn't going to be a two feet or three feet style um, booster for your vehicle. They do offer kind of a desktop uh, antenna, which gives you a bit more range. I think people were saying you get a foot or so, um, possibly more. But one of the problems with the internal antenna is it can't have too much power because it interferes with the outside antenna and it gets kind of this reverb type of effect where it's picking up on itself and doing nothing for you. So that's worked really well for our camper because realistically our camper is really small and we can't have that much antenna uh, separation from the outside antenna to the inside antenna, unlike our Winnebago view, which was much larger and we could just separate those a lot further. So this has worked out pretty well. Um, this unit basically just powers on and off with this little button on the outside here. Um, when it's off, off. When it's on, it kind of just turns green. Sometimes it flashes red green as it starts loading and, oh, there it goes. And then it will just stay green solid when it is working. Um, so let's take a look at the roof, see what the difference is in, in the antenna versus the old antenna. The Drive Reach standard car mount antenna. Now this thing is just a little shark fin. The cool thing with it is it's magnetic or you can use adhesive tape to stick it down. Now the problem with our camper is that the roof is wood and it's got this TPO covering to it so there's no uh, metal for it to bounce off of. This an antenna needs a ground plane in order for it to function at all. In order to do that we just picked up a piece of steel, painted it, and screwed it down to the roof. And that provides enough ground plane for the antenna to work pretty well. What we found is that compared to our Drive X we had, which had the baseball bat style antenna that uh, stuck up, we mounted it about a foot higher than the roof, was that that antenna, while it does have higher gain, it has somewhere between two to four dBi gain versus this one is less than one dBi gain, is that even though this is a smaller antenna, because that booster down there is a higher power unit, about twice the power, we actually get more usability out of this than the old antenna. Now, if we wanted to really boost stuff up, we could use you know, that baseball bat style antenna and this drive reach, or even get a directional antenna, or even get a higher gain antenna. A lot of people have these crazy masks that they'll set up. However, for our uses, we don't like setting stuff up every time we go someplace and we like exploring. So we're not gonna spend a bunch of time screwing around with this stupid cell booster. We'll just power it on and off when we're there. Now the baseball bat style antenna, our biggest complaint with it was because it sat up another foot higher than our roof was that we would smack it on everything from airports, little uh, you know height things to uh, you know tree branches and everything else. And that thing would just be smacking and then going back and forth on the spring mounted antenna and it you know, wasn't ideal. This guy is so low profile that it's even lower than our roof fence and it's been fantastic because it does perform better than the Drive X just as it is. Um, but like I said, if you're trying to get absolutely the most possible, you can incorporate other antennas. Now, is it worth doing that? I don't know. I mean, realistically, for the most part, in our experience is that this thing is not magic. You know, it's not gonna create something out of thin air. If you have crappy service, it's probably not gonna be 
fast service. It's gonna be the difference between non-functional and functional. And by functional, it means that maybe you can send an email whereas before you couldn't, or maybe you can send a text message whereas maybe you couldn't, or a phone call. So for us, it works great because most of the time, we don't really have huge data needs or whatnot. We don't need screaming fast internet service in order to uh, do basic communications with people. And when we're out places, realistically, we like being just disconnected. But in the cases where we need to send something out, this little guy is useful and has proven beneficial a lot of different times. Is it worth whatever 500 bucks that it costs? I think that's, uh, it's totally up to how much you're gonna use it. You know, for us, I think uh, it's, it's nice to have. I mean, it's worth it versus paying for a satellite phone or a satellite communication device um, just to have that little bit further communication. Um, but for a lot of people, it's not, I don't know why the, there's so many overlanders that are running these things now. To me, it's kind of uh, funny to see these uh, Toyota Tacomas and whatever rolling down the road with these antennas hanging off of them. But, uh, you know, I guess it's kind of become a cool thing to have these cell boosters, which is weird, but um, they are hel helpful at different times. Um, but like I said, they're certainly not anything that's gonna be world changing or whatnot. If you guys have used either of these cell boosters, feel free to post up in the comments if you have any other thoughts on these or other experiences that have been different. Glad to hear what your thoughts are. If you have any questions about either of these units, we can help answer what our experience has been with them. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video.